One of the issues that our opponents bring up in, around the issue of medical cannabis is that there isn't enough research. You'll hear this in debate after debate. You'll also hear elected officials put off making decisions that they need to make about medical cannabis uh, because they're waiting for more research. The truth is, in this country, it's a huge challenge to be able to do even small sample studies on medical cannabis. And that is because uh, NIDA, the National Institute of Drug Abuse, actually has a monopoly on the marijuana that can be grown for research. So in this country, if you want to study a substance, uh, you have to go through the FDA and get a study approved by the FDA, and then you can go and get that substance and start your research. So if you're a scientist that wants to study LSD and its, side of, you know, its use in treating PTSD, you would go through a process of getting a study ready, submitting it to the FDA, and then the FDA would say yes or no. If the FDA said yes, you can study LSD, then you would just go back into your laboratory and start and make LSD and then start doing the, the testing on it. Now if you're a scientist and you want to study the effects of cannabis on PTSD, you would go through the same process of going to the FDA. But once the FDA has said, yes, you can study cannabis and its effects on, on PTSD, then you have to go to NIDA and ask their permission to use the cannabis they grow. And this is where we run into a lot of problems. That the actually NIDA, the National Institute of Drug Abuse, it's their mission to actually figure out the harms of drugs. And so they don't feel it's necessary to, to give up marijuana for research for good. So we've been stuck in this situation where very little research has happened on U.S. soil. Now this has been true except for about 10 years ago, uh, the state of California gave the University of California $5 million to conduct some research. And NIDA did cooperate with those studies, and so we have been able to see a lot more studies coming out in the U.S. But still, there's this huge barrier uh, for scientists to get through to actually to be able to do the research on this plant. And so as a scientist, you know, as much as I would like for scientists to be more political, the truth is they, they want to be scientists. They want to spend as much time in the laboratory as possible and as little time in Washington trying to figure out how they're going to do that research. All medical research is expensive and it takes a long time. And so for a scientist who sees barrier after barrier put in front of him uh, to research issues around PTSD or any other substance, and marijuana, it's going to be less likely that they're going to follow through and really get the plant that they need for research. And so what we've found in this country is that scientists have given up and have actually focused on, on other areas. Now this isn't true internationally. Uh, almost every major country in the G, G20 has a cannabinoid department and their country is researching uh, medical cannabis for, for use along not only symptom relief, but also looking at cures uh, around cancer and other neurological issues. So unfortunately, the barriers to research here in the U.S. Uh, are not only affecting the individual patients, uh, but they could be putting us at a, at a competitive disadvantage to the rest of the world uh, who are looking at all of the ways that cannabis is unlocking symptom relief and possibly cures for many conditions that we worry about. Mm -hmm.